What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today we are taking a deep dive look at this 2021 Ford Bronco Black Diamond. Let's start up here at the front and kind of show you what's going on with the vehicle itself. Now this is cactus gray as far as the color is concerned and as you can see you've got this molded in color front grill that I actually think looks really really nice. Now the more time that I'm spending with this particular Black Diamond that it, we've got retail ordered for a customer, um, the more I'm realizing the Black Diamond might be the most underrated trim level available in the Bronco. We understand that the base and the Big Bend are kind of more of the value package proposition. I'm really realizing this is a good substitute for someone that may want a Badlands edition but doesn't want to pay Badlands dollars. This might be a great option for you. But nonetheless, let's move on a little bit closer into the grill itself. You'll notice that even though this is actually molded in color, these little letters are removable. So you can pop them off, sand them, repaint them, or just even replace them if that's something that you want to do. This particular Bronco is upfitted with the heavy duty modular front bumper. And uh, the nice thing about this particular bumper is you can actually uh, it's modular <laughs> meaning that you can actually remove this entire end cap to give yourself some more clearance when you're going off-road or if you just want that more aggressive of a look this heavy-duty modular bumper also gives you the ability to upgrade the winch system that is still available um, even though that a lot of places have taken it off their website because there's a supply demand issue right now as with everything on the, the, the in the world right now, you can see our inventory and the lack thereof. This is a dealership between our Bessemer and Pell City store, which we're at the Pell City store today. We normally like to keep about a thousand cars and we are significantly less than that right now. But nonetheless, let's kind of get back into the winch itself. What's so interesting about that winch setup is that when you put the winch, it actually is blocking this area right here. And what you'll notice is this little block box right there, that is your radar sensor for the collision mitigation. So there is a, this is a radar box that's looking for cars in front of you. And if the vehicle sees and says, oh, he, dude ain't slowing down, you're about to get in an accident, it can actually get you ready and warn you and uh, even pre-charge the brakes to hopefully help you reduce the severity of an accident. And so it's really nice that you have that. But if you put a winch there, it's blocking that setup and you actually have to turn your collision mitigation off if you have that winch. So we've had other people say, oh, if I get the winch, it's gonna block my camera. Well, this one's not equipped with the camera but it also is blocking that radar sensor for your collision mitigation. So that's something you need to know before you just jump in and buy the winch setup for your Bronco. Now coming to the side, I wanna show you a couple of different things. You've got, uh, now this, if the wheel and the tire and the leveling, the suspension doesn't look right, that is because it's not. If you haven't already done so, you need to click on the actual video we did. Uh, click on the card up there and you'll be able to watch the video where we actually installed a full leveling kit on this particular uh, this exact Bronco actually and we tested it showed you what that looks like uh, and we do have those leveling kits available on our website down below tccustoms.com if you want to click into that and look at that but this is an upgraded tire it's got a one inch zone off-road leveling kit and it clears a 33 1250 on a 17 inch wheel now what's crazy about this particular wheel uh, because we were concerned about the offset and making sure that this this wheel tire combination as well as the suspension was going to clear everything the, the wheel is a 17 by seven and a half, 17 inches in diameter, and the wheel is only seven and a half inches wide, and it has a positive 55 millimeter offset, which means that you got a seven and a half inch wheel, wide wheel, and a 12 and a half inch tire. That's the reason you see so much bulge right there on the tire itself is because that wheel is so much more narrow than the actual tire. But what's crazy is that the, the you have no rubbing or you know clearance issues, even though we've maintained the crash bar in the front and then also in the rear as well. So a pretty sweet little setup there. Now this is obviously gonna be your four door version. And uh, with the four door version, you have the ability to go with a soft top or a hard top. This one is opted with the molded in color hard top. Now I'm gonna show you him. You know what, let's just go ahead and show you right now what that modular uh, molded in color. Why do I keep saying modular? The modular, by the way, is the hard top that is available in 2023 models. Uh, it's not available in this particular version, but what's so nice is you've got three or four little clamps right here where you've got a clamp here, you've got this, this piece, and then this piece, and then you literally, which I think I've got to do the driver's side first, so let me pop over there and do that. But basically, you have on this molded in color hard top, you have got this clamp located right here. Twist this, twist this, twist this, and then you have the ability to literally pull the roof off 
right here. Now, one thing I actually want to point out to you is that this molded in color hardtop, notice that it does not actually have the sound deadening headliner on this piece, but it actually has it on the passenger side. So I don't know if this is a misbuild or what the situation is there. We're going to get some clearance and some clarification from Ford Motor Company. But it is interesting to see how easy it is to remove that setup. Now, I'm going to uh, actually throw this into the back of the vehicle. Uh, this one does come with the roof bags, but I don't want to open these up because, uh, once again, this is a customer's vehicle uh, that will be taking delivery of the vehicle tomorrow. But you'll notice that you've actually got the roof bag that you would want to put this panel inside this bag itself. Now, I, once again, I just want that customer to be able to open it. So I'm very gently going to just set this down just for the purpose of the video. And I'm gonna take the other panel off. Now, if you haven't had a chance to do so already, we've got a video that showcases the operation of that soft top. And uh, you know, the more I'm seeing this soft top, and I'm not just saying this because I work at a Ford dealership, Ford Motor Company doesn't pay my bills. Um, I'm really liking that soft top a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, but yeah, you can see this particular panel has got that sound deadening handliner. And for some reason that other one does not. So there you go. That's kind of what you've got. But as I set this down very ever so gently, all right. So as we got that set, uh, set down, I just kind of want to showcase to you what it looks like with the front panels pulled off. Now, if I had the molded in color hard top, that is going to be the setup that I would roll with most of the time is just rip that front two panels off. And as you can see, you've got the ability to have an open air driving experience without actually having to have any tools at all. And I think it is absolutely fantastic. One of the things you probably realized is I'm not afraid to make an idiot of myself. <laughs> so let's do this. Let me see if I can pull this rear panel off all by myself as well. It's probably recommended for two people, but uh, you've got one latch here, one latch here, one latch there, one latch in the middle, and then one latch on the back side. So let's see how I can get this off with one person. This, this is going to be interesting. Let's first off, let's see how heavy this, oh wow, it's a lot lighter than I thought it was. I've taken the front panels off before, but I don't recall if I've actually pulled the rear panels off. All right. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is something I definitely would recommend with two people because it, although it's not heavy, I just don't want to drop it, especially with as uh, big of issues as they've had of actually building enough of these hard tops. Uh, I'm going to call in some help and get someone to help me take this uh, this rear piece off. All right, so uh, Josh, my man, is apparently able to multitask. He can <laughs> help me take the top off and video at the same time. So please don't drop it hard, Josh. There we go. We're just going to leave it here for the purpose of the video. Uh, but yeah, um, very, very lightweight, but it's not something I would recommend you try and take off by yourself just because you don't want to slip and drop it, that kind of thing. So let's pump back into the interior and kind of showcase what we got. Coming into the driver's side or the front area, that is, um, I'm going to go ahead and hop in and kind of show you a couple of different things. Now, one thing that you, I don't know if you can hear the wind noise from the air conditioner, but the air conditioner on this Bronco is absolutely jumping. This thing puts out a lot of air conditioning, which is really nice if you want that open air feel. You can get enough air on you to make it manageable if it's a little bit hot. So uh, props to Ford on that specific setup. Now this particular interior is upgraded with the marine grade vinyl. As you can see right here, uh, if you're kind of new to the game, you probably would actually think this is a lot more like a leather because it is a very nice quality. Uh, you can see that it's got the blue stitching that kind of goes in with the rest of the black diamond interior theme. As you can see, you've got the blue accent uh, stitching here, not stitching, but the blue accent colors and then the blue, blue, blue everywhere. And it actually makes a really, really good contrast to the exterior of this cactus gray, I do believe. Next up, I want to talk about the value proposition that the Black Diamond presents. So this is kind of really in between the base model and the Badlands. And the reason I point that out is because those are the two orders that I've got. I have got a base model on order uh, for myself, and then I've also got a Badlands Lux package. Now, what's crazy, though, is this particular uh, Black Diamond has an MSRP of $46,875. Uh, what's interesting is that, that my base model has a sticker price of roughly 35000 This is 46, 47, and then my Badlands Lux package 
has got an MSRP of roughly $55,000. So this is a really nice midway point, especially if you don't need the stabilizer bar disconnect. That's gonna be your biggest difference. And with a simple leveling kit like this has got, this is really not a bad option. I do wanna step back in for here just a couple of things and show you a couple of different things. You do pick up the locking rear differential, the trail turn assist, since this is automatic transmission. That is an option you cannot get in the manual transmission. You've got your traction control set up right here and your hazards located right here. Now, the other nice thing about the Badlands or the Black Diamond rather, is you actually pick up a dual climate care air control. So that way, if my wife is really hot, uh, you know, she can turn it down to 66 and I can turn mine up to 72 and everybody is happy. So that is a really nice setup there. You also pick up heated seats in this setup as well. Now, the other thing that I want to show you is this setup is the new Sync 4 system. So even though this one does not have the big 12 inch screen, even the 8 inch screen does have wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all of that kind of stuff. And you even have in this particular setup navigation. Now keep in mind that Ford Motor Company even has a really nice setup with a uh, Ford Performance app that you can actually download and use the off-road trail maps in your Bronco. So a pretty sweet little setup there. Just like with all of your Broncos, you do have a nice instrument cluster here that allows you to see everything that you need to. And in addition to that, you also have your fuel economy there. And speaking of fuel economy, you're getting 18 miles per gallon in the city. You have 20 miles a gallon on the highway and a 19 combined. Now keep in mind, we did just get through upgrading the leveling kit and bigger tires. So this one will be affected as far as that fuel economy is concerned, but in bone stock form, that's what you get is a 19 combined fuel economy. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is going to be my leg room. So this is exactly how I would feel comfortable driving the vehicle. So I am six foot three, and as you can see, I've got plenty of headroom. <laughs> but anyways, I've got a lot of headroom. Uh, I've got plenty of knee room. This is where I would feel comfortable having the steering wheel located right here. And I bring that up to show you what the rear leg room is. So that way, if you've got a six foot three person in the front and you've got a six foot three person in the rear, you can see that, yes, I can't really put my knees like this straight, you know, I'm pushing into the seat. But if I've got my knees like this, it's fine. I mean, it's not where, um, I would feel a little bit more comfortable. So yeah, I mean, I would like a little bit more room, but realistically with the vehicle that it is and the space that I've got, I can't really complain. I would be fine with driving down to the beach in the backseat of this thing with someone that's six foot three in front of me as well, especially with this open air, man. I really absolutely love not having that support beam that locates right in front of your forehead uh, on the Jeep Wrangler. They've got that big bar that you can't really see anything you really cannot experience how nice it is this open air feel having this bar located behind your head i've heard it in other videos but this is the first time really experiencing it and it is nice not having anything obstructing your view of the sky so we moved the seats just a little bit forward so you can see what's going on with this next setup let's take a look at the floorboards themselves since this does have the marine grade vinyl you automatically pick up rubberized floors but this has actually got the floor mats located the floor liners and as you can see, when you pull this away, you've got these nice, very nice active uh, drain plugs. You literally open it up and you can wash out the entire interior. So I think that's a pretty sweet little setup. Now that I've got everything moved forward, you can even see the air conditioning vent that is located underneath the rear seat. And keep in mind, there is no air conditioner in the center console. It is going to be located underneath that seat. But I do want to point out to you, you do have a couple of nice creature comforts, just like your household outlet plug, USB-C, USB-A, and you also happen to have your window control switches located right here in the center console as well. So not bad as far as the creature comforts and still having a vinyl floor and vinyl seats. I think it's pretty sweet. Coming to the front seats, you'll also notice these are completely manual adjustable seats because once again, marine grade vinyl is designed to be washed out. You don't want electronics in the seat to adjust everything but they didn't just leave you high and dry, no pun intended. You actually can still raise up the seat just by lifting the lever to make sure that you're at the perfect ride height for being able to see the road. If you look at any of Ford's videos, they talk modularity, modularity, modularity about the Bronco, and they are right. This thing does kind of go together like an erector set, and for you young people, that's uh, 
never mind. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the fender flares for a second. The, the, these fender flares are awesome because if you're going to go off-roading or if you want to do like a fender delete kit or a fender flare delete kit, you can do that. There's going to be multiple tabs on the inside, no tools required, and all you have to do is pull it off and it comes right off using these little tabs right here. Uh, now, that's a very cool setup because you are going to be able to take this off, on and off, very easy for the trail. I'm just curious to see how many of these are going to end up on eBay with a five-finger discount. <laughs> so, with that being said, I want to talk about my next thing as far as the modularity is concerned are going to be these bolts. As you can see, to remove the entire rear fender is just a couple of hand tools away from being able to swap out a fender in case you scratch one or dent one up on the trail. It's going to be very nice and easy to swap out the actual fender itself. I've seen quite a few different YouTube videos that showcase that the Bronco Sport has got a bottle opener, but you know what? The big boy Bronco doesn't have one. Well, here is where it's located. It's actually located either out of the C or D pillar. I don't know. It's located far in the back and it's actually hidden out of the way. So this is your dedicated bottle opener located here. Now, a fun fact, that is not included on the two-door version. So if you are really serious about being able to open your bottles on the trail, you need to make sure that you opt for the four-door. One of my favorite things about the Bronco is the swing gate and the fact that you can not only open it to here and it kind of stops, as you see, but you can even push it even further all the way open to this particular position. Now, the other thing I want to point out is if you do like a leveling kit um, and wheels and tires or whatever, uh, if you don't upgrade the spare tire, it's going to look real goofy compared to uh, the rest of the vehicle where is you got BFGs on this and then you've got a different type of tire over here. So just make sure that you actually upgrade your spare if you're also going to do the rest of the vehicle. Pop in the hood of this particular vehicle, you are going to find... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so the reason that the car popped, uh, honked at me, is could be a couple of different things. One, it could be because I left the key and took it out of the vehicle with the vehicle running. And when you shut that door, it's basically Ford's way of saying, hey, dummy, you forgot to cut your car off. You might want to cut it off where you walk away from your vehicle. But nonetheless, let's take a look underneath the hood. This particular vehicle, it does feature the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. This is a V6 engine and it makes a ton of horsepower and a ton of torque. This is the upgraded version of the vehicle. Uh, as far as the engine is concerned, you do have a 2.3 liter standard and it actually makes even pretty decent horsepower and torque numbers as well. But nonetheless, if you want the big boy, go with that 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Uh, just looking at how crammed everything is underneath this hood, I will be absolutely shocked if people can fit a V8 in here. And so it actually leads me to believe a couple of different things as far as the engine and what is going to be the future of the Bronco. You know, everybody has mentioned, well, what, what's Ford going to do as far as a high horsepower version or a high, uh, high output version of the Bronco? And in fact, even the, our friends at the Bronco Nation came out with a video that showcased Shelby Hall racing a Shelby Mustang Bronco versus a Mustang. And at the end of the video, they actually tease the fact that, hey, maybe Shelby should, should do something about the Bronco. So I'm really kind of curious to see what they come up with with the limited amount of space you have underneath the hood there. So there you go. That is our video showcasing the Black Diamond Bronco. Guys, I hope you appreciated this video. If you found anything in this video entertaining, useful, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. It really does go a long way in helping that YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already done so, we do have these zone off-road leveling kits. At the time that I'm making this video, we do have them in stock. So check out those links down below. We can ship to you in the lower 48 states if that's something you are interested in doing. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel with the YouTube and that bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video. Peace. I keep thinking that I could have done something, but now I'm left with an empty heart. No making amends, no waking up beside you and holding you till.